Great to have you still with us here on the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Our next conversation is uh, going to be talking about the efficacy of the COVID-19 vaccines. Uh, the federal government, of course, has announced vaccinations will resume this month. And Nigerians, of course, are still, you know, having different reactions, varying reactions with regards COVID-19 in general. Uh, we've spoken, you know, at length here about, you know, the, the lack of attention to it, the lack of, you know, um, it seems like a lot of Nigerians don't seem to bother about, you know, being in a pandemic. Uh, the federal government, of course, uh, through the NCDC, is doing what it possibly can to safeguard Nigerians and ensure that as many Nigerians as possible are vaccinated against every single variant of uh, COVID-19. This morning, we're speaking with Dr. Blossom Madua Fokwa, who's a uh, uh, medical doctor, thank you so much for joining us. So much for having me. All right. Um, uh, the numbers in Nigeria are rising. Um, the Delta variant, which they have said is more, you know, aggressive, uh, seems to have gotten into Nigeria. And of course, the, the numbers seem to be even rising faster than they did last year uh, during the same period. Um, do, do you think we should be worried seeing the way things are going? So thank you so much for having me this morning. Um, to answer your question, yes, we should be worried. But on the one hand, on the other hand, we should also not be that worried. And I'm going to explain myself. We should be worried in because the Delta variant is more transmissible. It's also um, um, able to put people in hospitals more than the original variant that we had. But the reason I say we don't worry is in pandemics, pandemics come in waves. We know the 1918 pandemic came in up to four waves. So we're in the third wave. So this is what usually happens with these pandemics. People um, become very cautious, uh, start to adopt non-pharmaceutical interventions. After a while, people get exhausted. And that is exactly what we're seeing right now. People are tired. People are saying, you know what, we're done with this pandemic. And as soon as people become lax, the virus begins to uh, transmit itself. Another thing that is happening, another reason why we should worry is the longer this virus stays with us, the more it mutates. So the variant that we have now is not the variant we started with. Yeah. It's in the very nature of RNA viruses to mutate. So that is exactly what is happening with this virus. It's basically playing out the way we knew that we would. That's why we continue to ask people to adopt non-pharmaceutical interventions, wear your face covering, get, um, um, stay away from crowds. And then when the vaccine comes, take the vaccine. That way we're able to build up a good defense against this virus to stop it in its tracks. Yeah, um, and w we've not done very well with regards vaccinations. Um, I know we're meant to resume second uh, uh, wave of vaccinations this month, but we still have a very, very long way to go. Um, and other countries have spoken about herd immunity. Nigeria, it might take a long time before we even get close to herd Im immunity here, but share your thoughts on how far we've come with vaccination and how you think that may have, or is you know, in, in any way helping our cause here in Nigeria. So with vaccinations, we, we, we are, we're not even anywhere our targets yet. Our target, our initial target was to vaccinate 111.8 million Nigerians. But right now, we were just at 1%. So we haven't even, basically, we haven't even started. So that's why we need to provide an extra layer for ourselves, people in the developing world that don't have access to these vaccines, we need to continue to, to maintain those non-pharmaceutical interventions, our face coverings. We need, we can't get tired of doing these things. They sound so simple. That's why people actually don't think they work, but these things actually work. So before we can get our population vaccinated, we need to protect ourselves by being responsible, avoiding crowds, wearing our face coverings, washing our hands, regularly yeah um the, the, the government of course will continue to to do what's you know necessary to, in order to get uh, vaccines into the country 
Um, the COVAX uh, vaccines, um, I think we heard about uh, Moderna, I think that might be arriving in Nigeria also. Um, yes. But, you know, I, I want you to share your thoughts on some of the fears that people have that as the vi vaccine or the virus continues to mutate, the efficacy of the, of the vaccine reduces. And uh, are those serious concerns? Yes, a lot of people have asked me this question and people have, have um, valid concerns with vaccine efficacy with the new variants. But a beautiful study came out, uh, I believe it was last month, that actually showed that the vaccines are efficacious even against the new variants. One thing we need to be looking at is the effectiveness of the vaccine in keeping people out of hospital. So that's really the key thing with these vaccines. An individual may get uh, the infection, but the individual ordinarily maybe would have been hospitalized, would have, been, that would have needed to be ventilated. But with the protection of the vaccine, the person is kept out of the hospital and the person is able to be kept alive. And that's what we've seen in the study that came out last month, that even with against the new variants, the vaccines are still efficacious. What, 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 is that uh, research carried out here in Nigeria or you know outside Nigeria? It was research carried out outside Nigeria. Yeah. Because so, so. remember, the Delta variant was just detected in Nigeria yeah. just a few weeks ago. So, 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 do you think it's um, it's sad maybe that we don't have enough research being carried out on a day-to-day -day basis here in Nigeria? to you know, give us better clarity of what our situation is? You're absolutely correct. I mean, it's, it's, it's an indictment on, on the education system in Nigeria, I'm sad to say. But we're not doing enough research in country to aid us in decision making. We tend to rely on research from outside the country. And it's really sad because even testing, for example, testing for uh, COVID-19 in Nigeria is way below the level that should be. So if we're not even testing enough, then how are we going to even start to do the research? Because we're not picking up at all the cases that we have. So we have a lot of, of layers, a lot of, of, of issues that we need to solve out before we can get to the point where we're doing robust research in country. So, 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 so shouldn't that be a problem? Because from three things that you've mentioned now, we're not testing enough. We're not doing enough research to understand the peculiarities of our you know, COVID-19 situation here in Nigeria. And at the same time, we're not vaccinating anywhere close to enough. Um, so are, are these three factors signs of a complete explosion of COVID-19 here in Nigeria? Because we should also add that people are also not following these um, non-medical rules. To wear face masks is a struggle here in Nigeria. People aren't washing their hands. People aren't keeping away from crowded places. In fact, you, you've completely preached my message. That is exactly what I'm saying. We're not doing everything that we need to do. We're not vaccinated enough. We're not uh, being personally responsible. We're not doing the things that we ought to do. The only... Uh, I will say, I'm not going to call it a protective factor. The only factor that we have in our favor is that we have a relatively young population. Only 3% of this country is above the age of 65. And that's why we haven't seen the kinds of numbers that people in places like the US, in Italy, in places like Brazil, those places are seeing. But that really is our only um, saving grace. If not, the situation will be completely different. So you have raised four valid points that basically I was trying to raise. Fantastic. Uh, well, sadly, it's not, it's, we also haven't carried out proper research. And back to the research conversation to tell us, you know, if that truly really is why we have, you know, so exactly. little debt. You know, these are just insinuations, I believe. Exactly. Exactly. We haven't done enough research. I, I mean, I'm part of a few research pro projects and sometimes fund constraints just make it difficult for you to actually go as far as you want to go. So it's, we don't have a, a supportive environment for research. We don't have enough funding. 
the brain drain is taking a lot of our good people outside the country. So all these factors really have, have come together and to just put us in, in a position where we're basically just tra struggling to meet up with the rest of the world. Yeah. Talk a, a little bit more also about vaccine hesitancy um, and those factors you know, here in Nigeria uh, that might be limiting the number of people who actually go take these vaccines. Yes, absolutely. So when we started vaccinating people in March, the vaccine hesitancy was, I mean, it, we couldn't believe how hesitant people were. I mean, on social media, videos were going viral, about all sorts of conspiracies about this vaccine. But then we, we people, influential individuals began to publicize their vaccination. We began to push the message out, and people actually began to get more receptive. I remember actually walking on the streets with a megaphone, inviting people to get vaccinated and listening to their concerns. People were saying, oh, uh, the pandemic is over. People were saying, oh, uh, COVID-19 is for the rich. It's for people in Victoria Island and Lekki Phase 1. And but when you really sat down to talk to them, you realized we needed to do a lot more uh, community mobilization. We needed to, to actually get down to the grassroots and speak to the people where they were. And we found out that people now began to get more receptive to getting vaccinated. So now the vaccine hesitancy has reduced to a very large extent based on the risk communication activities that we carried out. Okay, um, so, so we don't move too far away from our topic. Uh, uh, it's the efficacy of the vaccine, and we're speaking this morning with uh, uh, Dr. Blossom uh, Madua Fokwa. And uh, of course, uh, it's mostly about the Delta variant, Nigeria's COVID 19 situation, and what must be done. Uh, so uh, let's now move into the what must be done aspects now that we're not getting enough of these vaccines. How do you think you know, Nigerians can be encouraged to? ensure that they you know, wear their face mask and wash their hands and stay away from crowded places. We don't have enough public information. Uh, the, the Nigerian government doesn't seem to do so much with regards uh, you know, information from the National Orientation Agency, using every platform possible to uh, inform more Nigerians about uh, the vaccine. Yes, very, 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 very valid points. And it also goes back to what I had said, um, said earlier about people getting exhausted with this pandemic. It's almost as if even the government has gotten tired of telling people repeatedly to wear your face mask, uh, masks. I remember at the early part of the pandemic, we were, we were always on TV, on radio, on the streets, everywhere, billboards. But now it's almost as if everyone has gotten exhausted with it. But we can't get tired. Because I'm going to keep saying it, for a climb like Nigeria, a place where the, 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 the resources to vaccinate our population, are, the resources are extreme, I can tell you, extremely limited. Non-pharmaceutical interventions are our key. And like I said, we need to go to the grassroots. We can't just, I mean, how I many, if, if there's, a, there's a, a kind of audience that, is listening to me right now on TV. But there's also a kind of, or the majority of Nigerians will not be watching TV. So we need to get to their leaders. We need to get to the key en entry points. I remember going to a particular um, location and really we had to speak to the, the, the head of the Aboros yeah. to, to let us speak to their people. And he actually helped us to mobilize their people. So that's how we get to the Nigerians. Wearing on face masks, regular hand washing, avoiding crowds. These are things that we have to keep doing because this pandemic is not going to let up till we're completely, it's completely done ravaging the world. So we need to keep doing these things. We can't get tired. All right. Two final questions. Uh, if you can quickly just respond to them as briefly as possible. Uh, the first one is, you know, it, it, is it true to say that everybody will get you know, infected with COVID-19 at some point, uh, just like the regular flu? Uh, or is there, is there more likely that the virus will be defeated and would eventually fade away? And, you know, some people would never get to experience it. 
And then second, um, the, I saw a report on you know, um, vaccines not being able to fix uh, erectile dysfunction you know, after COVID-19. Um, you know, is that enough motivation to get vaccinated? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to take the first question. I'm, so, I'm going to take us back to the 1918 pandemic. Yeah. In the 1918 pandemic, not everyone actually got uh, the Spanish influenza. Not, not everyone got it. So you, there are things that you can do to protect yourself. I mean, aside from getting vaccinated, if you wear your face covering and avoid out, you're less likely to get the infection than someone that is going around and not having a care in the world. To answer your second question, I do not know there's a, uh, a connection between this vaccine and erectile dysfunction, and I'm going to leave it at that. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Dr. Blossom Madafokwa, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for, for speaking with us. And we look forward to another conversation, hopefully when the vaccines um, arrive and, you know, there's more and more questions to be asked about uh, uh, efficacy again. We'll, we'll speak with you. Thanks once again. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. All right. Stay with us here on The Breakfast. Our next conversation is going to the Southeast, the IPOB's sit-at-home order. How successful was it? And of course, uh, what are the little details here and there that must be spoken about uh, moving forward? We'll be uh, getting into that after this break. Stay with us.